All right, greetings, Champ Car World. Welcome to our first race of 2021. Your TireRack.com, and I'm going to read this right before TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series for the 2021 race at Road Atlanta. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, including Tire Rack, Frozen Rotors, Racing Radios, Lifeline, RVA Graphics and Wraps, Bell Racing, the official helmet of Champ Car, and UUC Motorworks. We'd also like to thank the Chandler School, who is on board again to sponsor our Sportsmanship Award, and our class sponsors, Discovery Parts and MoneyShiftRacing.com. Huge thank you to the sponsors. They support the club. They help keep the racing down for you guys, cost of racing down, which is awesome. Uh, I'd also like to thank the staff who are continuing to work with us, uh, especially through the last challenging year. <clears throat> Mostly, I'd like to thank the racers and Champ Car. You guys stuck with us through 2020. It was a difficult year for everybody. Uh, make no mistake, 2021 is going to start off a lot similar to the end of 2020, but it's a new year and it's a new opportunity and we're, we're hoping for good things. So thank you guys for sticking with us through those times. We look forward to a great season in 2021. Got a lot to cover for this race, so let me dive right into it. Uh, I've got notes here, so it should flow smoothly, but like usual, I will forget to look at my notes and then we'll be chopping all over the place and I'll jump back again. So bear with me. Uh, first, please take a look at the supplemental rules. There's a link to them in the email that this video came with. There's a lot of information in there, background information on COVID, race time, event time, et cetera. So if you've got a question, please take a look at the supplemental rules. <clears throat> if you are new to racing with Champ Car, if you have not raced with Champ Car in a long time, or if you are experienced in other forms of racing, but just never been with us, or you just want a refresher, please take a minute to watch the new to Champ Car video. There is a link to it in the email, again, that this video came with, and there's a link to it on our forum site. Uh, there's quite a deep dive in there into pit lane rules, flagging, how we officiate the race, how it unfolds, all those kind of background details. So uh, if you're looking for a refresher or you got a new member on your team, take a minute, sit down, watch that video. It'll help answer a lot of questions, make your experience at the track a lot better. <clears throat> um, COVID. Start off with COVID. COVID's still a thing. It's still with us. Regulations at the city and state and local municipality level continue to evolve. They will be different as we go from race to race throughout the year. As it is right now, the only mandate we have for Road Atlanta is they're asking everyone to, more, to wear masks on the property. Um, unlike some other places, we're going to try to not get deep into your business everywhere you're at, every place you're at, or inside your camper or your hauler. But if you're outside in public areas or if you're anywhere where people have to gather and congregate like tech or registration or down on pit lane around other other community groups that you're not a part of, please be respectful and wear a mask. Please be respectful of your fellow racers. They may have a different outlook on things than you do, but let's be thankful that we can get back to the track and go racing. Uh, please just be respectful of your other racers and uh, let's wear the mask and let's go back to the track and have a good time. On COVID, we're still dealing with waivers. There's gonna be a link to three waiver documents in this email. Um, you can sign those in advance and bring them with you when you roll through the gate. The general waiver for Road Atlanta will still need to be signed at the gate, but this will cut down your time, the process to the time it takes to sign one waiver instead of all four. So please link to the other three waivers, the two from Champ Car and the COVID waiver for the track. Sign those, print those, bring them with you, and turn them in when you come through uh, the gates. Some folks have asked us about one-day passes. At this point right now, we are still going to be able to sell one-day memberships at the track. They're available at registration. So if you've got somebody, obviously it's, uh, it's quicker and easier if you get them on your crew now, either the driver or a crew member. But if you can't or you got somebody that just decides last minute to show up, you can go over to uh, registration and pick up a one day event pass there. We're gonna try and make some things go smoother and faster this year. One of the things we've heard quite a bit is how long it takes to get through tech. We're gonna try and make a concerted effort to change that this year. And the biggest thing we're gonna do, the number one thing that we hope is gonna make tech go faster is we're gonna flip the way tech works. Tech's priority will no longer be to value your car, nor to dig through your car and find every single little part or to help you work out how the part should be valued. 
It's your responsibility to value your car properly. Tech's primary focus is going to be on checking the safety gear and the safety equipment. Make sure that your car is in compliance with Champ Car's rules. We will have some extra people in the tech line before you get to tech to help you get your stuff entered in the system. But please have your tech form filled out before you get in the tech line. If you get up to the front of the tech line and your tech form is not filled out, they're going to move you to the side, hand you the form, and have you fill your tech form out yourself before you get back in the line and go through the safety check. It will help things go a lot smoother. And quite frankly, it puts the onus back on you guys to tell us what is on your car. Please remember that anything that you have changed, modified, rebolted, or anything else on your car needs to be declared. Even zero point items need to be declared. Just tell us it's on the car, tell us it's zero points, or record it in the form, or record it in the electronic logbook. And then if somebody else questions it later, you know, like at impound when you win, it will already be recorded in your electronic system. And any questions can be answered just by looking at the tech form, and we're done, and we move on to the awards presentations and trophies and champagne for everybody. So again, we've listened, we've heard, we're gonna try and make this tech system go a lot faster, but a lot of it's gonna rely on you guys. Please get your tech forms filled out properly before you get into the tech line. Remember, this is first race. Every single car is gonna to need to go through tech. It's gonna be a lot of cars there, so the faster we get these things done, the faster we get you guys through. Remember, your gear is going to need to be checked also. So bring your complete equipment. Be ready to get everything checked and displayed. We're going to put the tech stickers in the same place. Remember, it's got to be on the left side of the helmet. This is so we can look at it when you come to pit out. All right. We have a couple of incidents every race where somebody either doesn't have their sticker or they put it in the wrong place or they removed it. Um, it causes a little bit of a tie-up. So remember to get your gear checked. Uh, moving on to load-in day, um, the practice session. We are running a practice session. We usually run a practice session at Road Atlanta. It is going to be run in four different sessions. The times for those sessions are listed in the supplemental rules. The first two sessions, the one session before lunch and the first session after lunch are going to be point by passing only. We will allow you to take passengers with you in the car. If you wanna show somebody around the track, you wanna let a new driver go out with a little bit of coaching, we will let you take a passenger in the car. Both occupants of the car, passenger and driver, must be in the same full equipment rig that a driver in Champ Car is. That's full fire and safety suit, head to toe, five uh, point harness system, six point harness system with a double tail for the, the crotch belt. Um, the only thing we won't get on you about is a window net, but they've gotta be in the same equipment. No street seats and street belts or anything like that. That's why it's point by passing only. We don't run anywhere where we allow open passing when there's two people in the car. The second two sessions um, after lunch, uh, the last two sessions, I guess I should say, sessions three and four, we will allow open passing, but nobody in the car. Please remember that this is a test session. This is a practice session. Did I just say nobody in the car? Okay, you can have a driver in the car, I guess, but no passengers in the car. How about that? So anyway, little faux pas there, which I'm sure we can edit out. Um, so yeah, driver only in the last two sessions, sessions three and four, will allow open passing. But remember, this is a practice and test session, all right? If you're not sure the difference between practice, testing, and racing, go ahead and Google that. You can hit pause and Google race and practice and then get back on the video. We don't want any incidents, any crashes, or anything. This is a practice session, not another race. Nobody has ever been given prizes and trophies for winning practice. And you think I may be kidding, but a couple of years ago, I had an overturned car during a practice session on Friday at Road Atlanta. Okay, so let's not have that. No contact at all. No issues. No crazy driving on the Friday test session. If you have an off, a spin, or anything like that, please report to pit lane and let us take a look at your car. Again, this is not the race. This is practice and test, test, testing. We want to keep things under control. So if you have an off, you have a spin, you have an incident of any kind, please report to pit lane. Let us take a look at the vehicle. Just check you out. and We'll send you back on your way. Okay, on to the race. <clears throat> race starts Saturday, obviously runs 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. It's probably a good point to now to pause and say we have several new teams that are racing with us many of you have raced in other series for those of you who are joining us for the first time we really appreciate you making the jump over to champ car hope you guys have a good time 
Hope you guys continue to race with us. Um, those of you that have raced with us for a while will be familiar with this, but some of the rest of you may not. We start our races exactly on time as it says in the supplemental rules, which means an eight o'clock start means that we will go green at the start finish line on the racetrack at eight. You'll notice in the SUPS that it says cars to grid by 745. That means you gotta have your car in your pit stall, backed into place, driver in the car, buckled in, latched down, ready to go at 745, because we will start rolling cars right about then. We'll proceed down pit lane, roll them out. We will take two caution laps on the track. First time by, we'll double check all the transponders on the track. The second time by, the pace car will come in and you'll go green when you hit the line. And if I've done my math right, it'll be almost exactly at eight o'clock, they'll take that flag. So be buckled in, be ready to go. Uh, the question will obviously come up, how do we roll off pit lane? Well, that's a really good question. Jimmy, who apparently is the only one among us who knows how to do this, has his random number generator. <clears throat> so sometime between now and then, we will randomly select a pit stall. The cars in that pit stall will roll out first and we'll proceed down pit lane to the end, pick up at pit stall number one and go back. So let's say, for example, we pick lucky number 13. The cars in pit stall 13 will roll out. We'll go 14, 15, 16, 17, all the way down. And we'll pick up one through 12. And that's how the cars will roll out off pit lane. So pretty simple process. We'll have plenty of staff on pit lane to help walk you through it. But if you're unfamiliar with the process, that's how it'll go. A little bit more deep dive on that in the uh, new drivers meeting too. So feel free to check over there. So in theory, from eight to 10, you guys are gonna run around the track with no flags, no incidents, no nothing. Uh, all the champ car staff are gonna leave and go to a really, really long lunch and you guys can run around. We'll come back to the track about five minutes to 10 and end the race, right? right? Odds are good that things are gonna happen in between then. But you guys are gonna have the racetrack to yourself and you're running nonstop from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. In between those times, you're gonna to have to make some visits to pit lane. Remember, Drivers are limited in their stint time to a maximum of two hours. That's from the time you leave pit out to the time you get to pit in. Two hours. Check the rules on that. Two hours. What happens if you go over? Don't go over. Two hour stint. Most of you can probably go anywhere from an hour and a half, about an hour, 40, hour, 50 minutes. And somewhere in there, you're going to have to visit pit lane for fuel and a driver change. Pit lane speed limit is 20 miles an hour. We've done more and more races last year at 20 miles an hour, and I found that the ones that I limited pit lane speed to 20 miles an hour, pit lane was a much smoother and safer place. We have played around with different speeds at different tracks. This year, we're gonna make all pit lanes, every event, everywhere we go, 20 miles an hour. So you shouldn't have to worry about trying to figure out what the pit lane speed limit is at a particular race. If you're at a champ car event, pit lane speed is 20 miles an hour. I think that'll work a lot better. So how does your pit stall or how does your pit stop unfold? If you want a lot more information on it, again, please watch the new driver video. But remember, when you come to pit in, everyone stops at pit in. Doesn't matter why you're coming on pit lane, stop at pit in. You're going behind the wall, you're gonna change a tire, you're gonna do fuel and driver change, it doesn't matter. Stop at pit in, there will be a stop sign, a tent, and a person standing there. They will put a timer on your car, and you'll head down, do your, pit stall, you'll do whatever it is you're going to do. When you go to go back out on the racetrack, you will again stop at pit out. Everybody stops at pit out. Doesn't matter if you're coming from Black Flag, if you've done fuel and driver change, you've been behind the wall for three hours, it doesn't matter. When you get to pit out, stop. They will check your timer if it's applicable. They will check your wristband. Every single time you go out, they will check your wristband. Even if it's the same driver and you've been on pit lane four times, when you leave pit out, they will check your wristband to make sure that you're a licensed participant. They will check the safety gear on your helmet. They will look for the little sticker on the side of your helmet to make sure your safety gear has been checked. Then they will do a courtesy check of your safety equipment, your belt, your window net, your head and neck restraints, whatever. Please remember that it's a courtesy check. It is your and your team's responsibility to buckle your driver into the car safely, not the champ car staffs. They will look in, they will do a quick check. If something looks out of place, you know, there's a belt that's slipped off a loop or something, they'll, they'll try to fix it if they can. But if it's not right and it's nothing that they can fix quickly, 
they're going to turn you around and send you back to your pit stall. So that's not a good thing. Nobody really likes that. So invest the extra five or 10 seconds in your pit stall to get your driver buckled in properly. Okay, it's your responsibility to get them in there right. If it doesn't look right, my staff's going to turn them around and send them back. So in between that time on pit lane, you go to your pit stall, and let's assume you do have to do fuel and a driver change. So again, deeper dive on the fueling rules in the new driver video, but if you take fuel, you must spend five minutes on pit lane. That five minutes is measured from pit in to pit out with the timer that we're going to put on your car. Taking fuel is defined as taking the gas cap off. The minute you take that gas cap off and you crack the fuel system open, it's a fuel stop and you got to spend five minutes. doesn't matter if you take one or two gallons at the end of the race or you took a full 15 gallon fuel load. A fuel stop is a fuel stop and requires five minutes. During the fuel stop, from gas cap off to gas cap back on and fuel stuff back over the wall, in between those two points, everyone over the wall must be in full driver safety gear head to foot. Socks, suit, gloves, balaclava if it's required. If you have facial hair, <clears throat> it's required that you wear a balaclava. Full face helmet, visor down. You may notice that I didn't mention shoes. That's because I will allow you to wear closed toed lace up shoes, right? Driving shoes are expensive and they don't usually wear out well walking around on pit lane. That's not what they're made for. So we will allow you to wear closed toed lace up shoes, but everything else has got to be the same gear you're in when you're driving the car. Number one, hands down by a factor of 10 incident we see at every champ car race is the visors are up. I did it myself when I was driving. You're in the pit stall getting ready and the visors up so you can breathe and you just forget to flop it down when you go over the wall. So if you see one of my staff come up to you and give you one of these things, it just means close your visor. <clears throat> it's a good time to reference this too. The staff on pit lane, their primary job, I tell them this all the time, those are a reminder because they know it already. Their job is to help you get through the race safely. Our staff is not there looking for a reason to ding you or find a problem or get you in trouble in any way. My staff, me, we are there to make sure you guys get through the race safely and have a good time. So if one of my staff comes up to you and tells you to back up a little bit, close your visor, put your gloves on, whatever, they're only doing it for your safety. Just get in line with whatever it is they're asking you to do, fix whatever thing it is they're seeing, and get back to going on to your race. They're only there to help you. Um, the only thing you can do while the gas cap is off and you're fueling the car, other than fueling the car, is change the driver. You're allowed five people over the wall during a fuel stop. <clears throat> one person handling fuel jugs, one five gallon jug at a time handled by one person, one person handling the fire extinguisher, 10 pound ABC, dry chemical fire extinguisher, charged with the pin pulled, held properly, waiting to douse a fire if something happens. If you read our rules carefully, there is a different type of fire system that you are allowed to use. Um, it's a unique kind of fire bottle. If you don't know what it is, then you probably shouldn't be using it. If you do know what it is, then look it up in the rule books and you're, you're welcome to use it. But there is a second type of fire extinguisher available. But again, unless you know what it is or where to find it, you need to stick to a 10 pound ABC dry chemical fire extinguisher. You're allowed the driver in and the driver out and one person to assist the drivers. Those are the only people allowed over the wall and they've all got to be in full gear. We ask that you do not stack fuel jugs up on the wall. Keep them on the ground until they're ready to go over the wall and then have someone hand them over to the person doing the fueling while they exchange the jugs and hand them back. Don't stack them up and extras. If we spill one fuel jug, five gallon fire is pretty bad. I don't want one five gallon fire to turn into three five gallon fires because you knocked a bunch of fuel jugs over trying to get away from the first fire. Remember that we want the person with the fire extinguisher, we say 10 feet back. The big thing is I don't want that person right on top of the fueling activity. Because if a fire starts, they're gonna be in the fire instead of far enough back to put it out. We say 10 feet, really three adult steps ought to be good enough. Just as a reminder, put the thought process into this. Right now we have something like 100 cars signed up. I have 39 pit stalls. Most of the pit stalls are gonna be three deep with cars. As I said earlier, most cars can go anywhere from an hour and 15, hour 20 or so, to let's say an hour 40, hour 50. So within that 30 minute window, especially for the first stop, you're going to have 100 cars coming onto pit lane in the space of about 30 minutes, each one taking on average 14 to 15 gallons of fuel. 
It's going to be busy. Please keep your eyes open, watch the other cars, look out for the other team members, look out for the other crew members, wear your safety gear, and keep your head and your eyes on what you're doing. I put it this way in the other video, and I'll say it again here. You're gonna be on track. Assumedly, you can go for easy math for Dana. Let's assume you can go two hours, right? That's 120 minutes of racing. A fuel stop takes about three, right? Your time on pit lane's five minutes, fuel stops three, maybe two for the fast teams. I'm asking for your undivided attention on fueling for three minutes out of every 120 minutes. Please just focus on what you're doing, wear your safety equipment properly, fuel the car safely. Once the gas cap goes back on and all the Bernie bits, right? The half empty fuel jug, the drip pan that you're supposed to have under the fueling area, all the Bernie stuff is back over the wall. Then at that point, you can service the car. On the drip pan, to be noted there, we do allow a catch can. You read the rules, it does allow a catch can to be inserted into the exterior of the car to catch any overflow. You'll, those overflow cans are great, but you still have to have a drip pan. It's gotta be three inch hard sided, something to catch any spuel that sloshes out of the, uh, the fueling area or the catch can or anything like that. So if you've got a catch can, that's great, but just remember you still have to have a drip pan in place. So once all the Bernie bits go back over the wall, then you can take your safety gear off. You can clean up whatever spill you drip. You can check the oil in the car, check the tire pressures, lug nuts or whatever, and then send your driver back out. But remember, from gas cap off, gas cap back on, and all the burning stuff behind the wall, the only thing you can do is manage the fueling and change the driver. After the gas cap goes back on, then you can change tires and you can do all the so how long can you stay on pit lane? We keep talking about five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. There's nothing that says you got to get out of your pit stall in exactly five minutes. Five minutes is the minimum time on pit lane to handle a fuel stop. If you're going to be on pit lane any longer, we ask that you limit your time on pit lane to 30 minutes. <clears throat> if you got to make any repairs that are going to last more, longer than 30 minutes, then please take your car behind the wall. Because remember, you're going to be sharing that pit stall with about three other people. So I'm sorry, three other cars. So be kind to your other teammates out there. Be kind to your other racers. And if you're going to be on pit lane more than 30 minutes, take your car back behind the wall. If you want a deeper dive into that stuff, I know I kind of blew through it right there. But if you want a deeper dive into it, then please do yourself a favor and watch the other, the other uh, drivers, uh, the new driver, new to champ car driver meeting. I'll get that right. Holly will edit that. It'll look amazing, I'm sure. All right. So. Back onto the race. You're out on the track, you're running around. A couple different flags you're gonna see. Again, there's a deeper dive in this in guess where? In the new driver video. But keep an eye out for your flags. We will show the green at the start finish at the start of the race. And any time that we go back to green after we've had the pace car out. Other than that, we will not show the green flag for the entire race. Champ cars rules, no flag is green flag. So if you're looking at the flag station and you see no flag or you've already gone by start finish and we've gone back to green, you don't have to look for a green flag everywhere you go. No flag is green flag. Cautions. Waving yellows and standing yellows, right? Standing yellows, 70% race speed, no passing. Waving yellow, 50% race speed, no passing. And to reiterate, because I've, I've heard this mentioned recently, that is 70% of your race speed and 50% of your race speed, not the leaders, not somebody else's, not a, some magical reference car. The idea is I want you slowed down so that you don't create an incident or a bigger incident at the first one. We use line of sight rules. That means if you can see the flag, that flag is for you, right? You can see the flag, you see the standing yellow. As soon as you see it, get in line, no passing, slow down to 70% race speed, you're probably going to look for the next flag, which is going to be waving. So you're going to remain single file, no passing, slow down to 50% race speed. After you get past the flag, past the incident, and you can see the next flag station and see that there's no flag, then you can go back to racing. So people have pointed out to me some other series where they allow all the cars to get next to each other or side by side or something else as long as they don't complete the pass. That is not how we do it in Champ Car. I want you guys nose to tail. I don't want anybody next to each other, alongside each other, or staging a pass or any other terminology as you go through the incident area. I want you guys nose to tail, 
on the opposite side of wherever the incident is until you get back past the incident and see the flag station, then you can go back to racing. Can you pass the safety vehicle, one of the tow trucks or something? If it's a standing yellow or a waving yellow and there's a white flag out, the vehicle is in motion, yes, you can pass it, but look for hand signals if they give you any. Uh, they should be on one side of the track or the other, so pass them carefully on the opposite side. Look for hand signals if they give them to you. And as soon as you get past the vehicle and you, again, you see the next flag station, then you can go back to racing. For those of you that are coming from the sprint racing world, this, you don't really need to attack every corner, every pass, every moment, because you've got 10 minutes left in the race. Uh, we, we literally are timing these races with sundials and calendars. Okay, there's plenty of time. Get in line, get through the incident safely, and then get back up to speed. If we put the double yellow out, it means we're going to be putting out the pace car. Key thing with putting out the pace car is we're looking for the leader. <clears throat> I will make every attempt to pick up the leader. If the leader pits, I'll make every attempt to pick up second place. By the time I get down to like third or fourth with people diving on pit lane, I'm just going to pick up whoever I, whoever I have to. Um, Early in the race, can that cause an issue? Yes, it can, but remember that the reason the double yellow was out is because something's wrong on the track and I need to get safety vehicles out there quickly. So work with us on this. If you are the leader, congratulations. I'm proud of you, you're the leader, good job. Please know you're the leader and look for the pace car. If you see the double yellows come out and you know you're the leader, look for the pace car coming off pit lane and fall in behind them and help us, help us gather up the field. Please don't race my pace car. Jackie's my pace car driver, and she does look for the opportunity to hammer down if she has to, um, but it's not the best way to do it, so please look for the pace car and fall in behind her. Um, under double yellow, we say this all the time, but it bears repeating. The purpose of the double yellow is I got to get the field bunched up together so I have a big area of open track to work the incident. That means I need you guys all bunched up in the field. So if you're looking out your windshield, and you see double yellows, you should see double yellows and another car. If you do not see a car in front of you, you're going too slow and you need to catch up to the pack. Catch up to the field. If you're the leader, you should see the pace car. If you're not the leader, you should see somebody's car in front of you. Catch up. If you're going around slow under double yellow and you don't see something in front of you, you need to catch up to the field. Remember that double yellows are displayed standing. They just hang them out and standing unless you're actually in the incident area. And that's still, I said it a minute ago, think on it, 70% race speed. Okay, so catch up to the field. At that point, the pace car will modulate the field at whatever speed I tell her to based on how, what's going on with the incident. But I need you to catch up to the field. It's very important. If I got multiple groups running around out there, it just takes longer to clear the track and it just takes longer to get back to racing. Ultimately, I want to give you guys as much green flag racing as I possibly can. And the best way we can do that is to clear the incidents and get back to racing. Red flags. I don't like to use red flags if I can avoid it. Um, but if I have to, it, it means something's wrong, right? I, I've made this couple of commitments about red flags before. I don't use them lightly, but if I do have to use it, it's really important. There's somebody on fire. There's somebody out of their car. There's a really bad crash. One of your fellow competitors is in a lot of trouble, and I need to move rescue and safety gear right now. If I display the red flag, don't slam on your brakes, skid to a stop. Ultimately, please don't cause me another incident. Bring your car safely and quickly to a stop on the racetrack, and then wait for further directions. Move your car to one side or the other of the racetrack. Some clubs specify the side. I really don't care. But if all the cars in the line in front of you all stop on the left, please stop on the left with them and keep the main surface of the track clear. Remember, the whole point of the red flag is so I can move safety equipment quickly. So just try to keep track clear for them. If you can stop your car in such a place that you can see a flag station, terrific. But if you can't, please don't creep around the racetrack looking for a flag station. Just stop your car. We will find a way to get you moving again. How long will you be under red flag? It depends. Uh, 100 degrees out at Willow Springs in the middle of summer, not long. Uh, Road Atlanta in February, usually pretty cool. Last year it was really cool, um, but I'm sure it'll be cool enough. I won't leave you in the car long enough to where it's uncomfortable. 
we can usually get a decision made within four or five minutes and know what we're going to do. One of two things will happen. We will either get you circulating again under yellow and then go back to green, or we will pick the whole field up with the pace car and bring you on the pit lane and then re-red flag the race if we have a, a long incident to clean up. We will never go from red flag immediately back to green, but we will find a way to get the field moving again. Not a problem. Don't worry about it. So if we, if we do have to go red flag, don't worry. We will, we will get you guys taken care of out there. Um, doesn't usually happen. Hope it doesn't, but it's, it's worth talking about. Um, that's all I've got for my notes on here. I'm glancing over my notes to really make sure I've actually written down everything. And I think I have. Polly, anything I've missed? Um, if they have any long-winded questions, they can email Bill Strong. <laughs> yes, that's usually the running joke. If you have a really, really, really long, complicated question, contact Bill. Um, no, seriously, if you have specific questions about the race, please feel free to email me. My email address is linked in the bottom of the email that this is in. If you have registration-specific questions, please feel free to uh, email Catherine. Um, but pretty much everything you're going to need to know is either in this video or in the email uh, that this video came to you in. Really happy to be back to racing in 2021. Again, I want to thank you guys for sticking with us, um, especially those of you that are coming over to us from other series. We're happy to have you. Hope you guys have a good time. Um, really thankful that we can get back to racing in 2021 and uh, hope this year goes on to some other things, uh, some better things. Been on a side note, please take a look at our schedule. We've added a couple of events, uh, especially events in that area. Carolina Motorsports Park is new on the calendar for us. A couple of new events on our calendar. So um, we're looking to kind of shake things up a little bit, you know, keep all the good of what we had and maybe give you guys the opportunity to race on a few new tracks. So uh, stand by for some, uh, what I hope is some good news and a very good year. So thank you guys very much. And I'm not seeing Polly giving me the, oh, you forgot thing. So I think I'm going to sign off now. Let's say thank you to everyone. And we will see you in two weeks in Atlanta.